This is the Bluetooth battery kit I received from DC House. The charger is 18 amps, multifunctional safety protection. The display has three pages of information. The battery has cold weather protection. I'm installing it in my Ryobi RM300E mower. These are the tools that I used on my mower. Um, power tools aren't required, but they sure make life a lot easier. You can do it without. You need a hacksaw with a sharp blade. This one's not real sharp. A Phillips screwdriver. A ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter socket. A 14 millimeter wrench or 9 16 whichever one you have. I like using the crescent wrench for bending stuff. A pair of pliers. A number 30 Torx tip. And you may want a drill bit, a large drill bit, maybe not. Some tape or tie straps. I also used a big piece of 2x4 for bending one of the brackets. The first step is to remove the seat. The bolts on the seat use a 14 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter socket. Then disconnect the seat switch. Open the inspection cover, disconnect the main battery disconnect. Now to remove all the covers. There's a total of 24 Torx 30 screws, four on the back cover, some on the side cover, and the front cover. Remove the other side cover screws and the four screws holding the controls on. Remove the control cover covers, the front and side covers. Loosen the top, finish the controls. Refasten the control with one screw. Remove the other side cover. Lift up the top cover as far as the wires will let you. Then disconnect the blue wire to they interrupt the charge port connector blue connection it may have a tie strap on it just cut the tie strap off now move the cover up a little further right here is the charger interrupt circuit remove the screw for that and disconnect the temperature sensor. Remove the panel. Take this harness, the interrupt harness, and move it out of the way. Move the seat harness out of the way. Disconnect this from the battery bracket. Tuck it out of the way. This is the main battery harness that you will reuse on the new battery. So you disconnect that. So 
you'll be reusing this piece. Disconnect all the internet, uh, the jumper cables, the one with the temperature sensor. While you got the temperature in your sensor in your hand, just go ahead and reconnect it to the back of the port connector. Remove the battery hold down bracket and the four batteries. Being careful, one of my handles was broken and I almost dropped my battery. Now it's time to bend the bracket for the solenoid. You can see here I'm wedging a piece of 2x4 in there. Here's another view of what I'm exactly doing. The solenoid will lightly hit the DC controller. Now here I'm bending the the top of the bracket over just a little bit. It makes it easier to slide that corner of the battery in. Here's another view of doing the same thing. Remove the corner of this seat support bracket with a hacksaw. Here you can see the results of my cut. I bent the lift handle spring bracket to a 45 degree angle and loosen these two bolts. This is the way they look from the factory. I unscrewed them about halfway down through the threads. This is the bottom view of the bracket. On all my cutting, I just used a hacksaw Preferably with a sharp blade. This one's not very sharp anymore, but When you're cutting this corner make sure you just cut the bracket and not the battery box so you can Kind of angle in here and Keep an eye on what you're doing Cut straight back to the end of the bracket. The pair of pliers. You can easily just wiggle it back and forth until it breaks off. That's it. Oh, I've got a demonstration of me cutting one, and I'll. Add that in, but meanwhile, that's what this end of the battery will look like when you get done prepping this end. Okay. Dropping the battery in the chassis. Now go ahead and install your battery strap. Tighten it down. Check it for secure. I had to tighten mine up one more notch. The next step is to tighten the lift handle support bracket under the mower. Make sure you remember to do this. On the electrical connections, I found that my cable was too short. So I used one of the little jumper cables that were in between, in between the two batteries. I used a quarter inch nut and bolt to bolt them together. And 
and tightened them securely. Now I've got enough cable to reach the positive post. These batteries have an eight millimeter screw that won't fit in the RM 300E eyelets. I purchased the reducer studs from Ace Hardware, Hillman part number 4468. You screw it into the battery. The positive terminal goes on. The positive terminal goes on here. Install the washer and nut. Get it good and snug. It doesn't take much, but it's, you don't want to strip it out or anything like that. Then you do the same thing on the negative side. Two smaller wires are for the DC house charger jumper. When tightening the bolt, cable bolts. Reconnect the charge port blue connector. Then reconnect the blue wire going to the charger interrupt. The motor should turn on. Cool. Before putting the top cover all the way down, I bundled my excess strap on my hold down. I gathered all the wires for my charge port and charger interrupt, taped them together. So things are fairly neat under there. For the DC house 18 amp charger cord on the mower, I drilled a hole in the back of my housing right under the seat. Then I got a knife and cut the housing straight down to the hole. Grabbed my charge cable, slid it in, and that's my charge connector. Now it's time to reinstall all the covers. Loosely start all the screws in each cover before tightening anything down. This will make it easier to get the alignment straight and everything in, positioned in the proper order when reassembling. There are three screws in that little panel next to the controls instead of just two Phillips screws. Install the front kick panel. And I forgot to install the monitor. I just removed the inner front screw for the control panel and that's where I'm gonna be mounting the monitor bracket. I fully tightened all the screws on the control assembly and then the front inner one I removed. That's where I'm going to install the monitor display bracket. I tilted it in a little bit and just tighten the screw down. Let's real secure that way. Feed the cable in through the battery access hole. Reach from the back and pull it through.
and screw it to the battery connection. I disconnected the seat switch, reconnect it, and reinstalled the little inspection cover. Uh, the monitor wire, it just kind of sits off to the side. It doesn't really hurt it to put the cover on over it. For those that installed the DC house charge adapter and purchased the DC house charger, you can connect it up. Plug it in. Turn the display on. And here you can see that it's charging. For those that are using the factory port, You've already completed all the wiring and wrapped it up. You plug your charger in to the port. Plug the charger into the wall. And you can see right here that the charger is charging. That's the two options. Put the seat down. On. Jumping for joy. Yay! That's the DC House 48 volt, 50 amp hour battery in my Ryobi 300E mower. Thanks for watching my video. Go out and have a good mow. After my first mow, the updated DC house battery had plenty of power and capacity. I highly recommend this battery in the 300E.